It's easy to be hyper-focused on finding the fastest way to get ahead. That's a great goal, but usually it requires making changes. Usually we, we tend to jump in too quickly. Or make the changes too abruptly so that it's difficult to sustain. This week's book has a solution. Slow down and take it easy. How can that possibly work? Don't we have to tackle the big changes right now? It turns out doing less can be an even more powerful tool. As long as you stay consistent. Several factors play a key role in making this happen. Like choices, habits, and momentum. So let's dive into Darren Hardy's book, The Compound Effect, Jumpstart Your Income, Your Life, Your Success. Welcome back. You're listening to Motivation Minute, where we unravel the timeless truths in that stack of books you've been wanting to read so that you don't have to. And this week, you're in for a real treat. We have The Compound Effect, and we also have a special guest to join us this week. Yeah, um, he is a actually very successful business owner in the roofing industry. I met him a while ago, and um, we're very privileged to have them on the show. So welcome, Warren, on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. It's an honor. Yeah, definitely. Good to have you, Warren. And, you know, this was your idea, The Compound Effect, and I loved it. It was a fantastic book you brought up. It reminded me of back in, like, book number in the teens that we did. It was The Slight Edge, which was a very similar concept of, you know, put in a little bit of effort every day and you get disproportionate returns. And what I loved about this book was it was very practical, like things you can do in your daily life very specific examples. I just really enjoyed that and how it multiplies out in ways you don't expect. Yeah, definitely. I thought this book was similar to some of the other books we've read in the past. And um, it's actually one of my favorite uh, concepts that I learned from kind of like self-help and, and personal development early on was the idea of small changes over a long period of time and how they add up. And um, I'm excited to get started with this book. But so how, when did you, f- um, or why did you choose this book uh, to talk about it, Warren. So I read the, this book this spring uh, about a year ago. We just seen a tremendous growth in um, our marriage and in our business life, uh, our spiritual life. Um, and it just really? really, I loved how simple it was, like you said, and it really just made everything a lot easier. Um, when I was younger, I always looked for the next big thing, uh, the, the biggest changes I could make in life. Yeah. And I kind of ignored um, the small things. So I love what, that this oh, book right. really helped me with that. So this book is interesting that it's helped you with not only like business stuff, but also like your personal life and marriage and everything. That's cool. So yeah. in what ways has it like helped in those areas? Or what are some of the things you've, the basic uh, ideas in the book that you've applied? Um, mostly just like consistency, um, like a really tight schedule, um, getting up the exact same time every morning. And for the first two hours, my mornings pretty much look exactly the same. Um, five uh, days, really? Five I really need to do that. Okay, I, I, am, <laughs> I am the same. You can predict me from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. exactly where I'll be. I've actually looked at my watch. It's like the same minute. I'm down the stairs. It's the same minute. I'm in my car. Same minute. I'm walking to work. That's, got, I'm I, not I like that at all. That that's, that's, that I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm, I'm very unpredictable, and that's actually something I'm, I'm not happy about. Like I want to... Be, have, be more consistent in so many things in my life. And that's what this book is about. So the routine, like what, what kinds of things did you change once you read the book? Like what ideas did it give you about how to jumpstart your routine? So I don't know about you guys and like if you're self-employed or not, but once you become self-employed, um, you have a lot of time freedom. They call it time freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's very easy to just, you can almost become lazy and only do the things that you have to do to make your business work. I used to get up as late as I could pretty much Um, quickly do a couple of emails and then run out the door. Um, Same here. So when I came home, I was tired because I'd worked all day and then I might've been very brief with my wife and then I went straight to work until supper was ready. Um, And now since I get a lot of my emails and stuff done in the morning, I can come home from work and I have a half an hour. I can help my wife with dinner or I can just spend time um, resting. That's cool. And so like it was, it was all about priorities for me. I, I mean, you, you all you just get that much time in the day. Um, it's whether like for me, it was when I do my stuff, I still did the exact same things, but since I did them early in the morning, they didn't take as long as more focus and the evening it just draws yep. 
I mean, two years ago, there was many times I was still doing quotes and invoices at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And so we, that's what I'm doing wow. pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so when I switched that to doing it from the time of 6 to 7 a.m., I got way, way, way more done. I was all by myself. The house was quiet. There was no distractions. I wasn't in a rush because I have to, you know, want to spend time with my family or whatever it is, get to bed on time. And we actually got way more done with the same amount of time just because of how, like, where we were most effective. Huh. Wow. That's huge. You know, this, reading this book has been actually more of a motivation for me to, to finally do a, an actual morning routine, you know. And, you know, I mean, good luck trying to find a successful person that doesn't have a morning routine. I've, yeah. I mean, every single video I see of someone that's successful, they always have a morning routine. They always do the same thing, and they create a habit where it just comes naturally. And, and Because I, your habits are you. Yeah. Like, the, the things you do one-off, like, where one afternoon you're like, I'll just catch up on this thing, and you do it like crazy, and then you just don't do it for months. Again, that those don't stick with you the same way as like doing that one thing a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is the book talked about doing it less than you feel like you need to every day because you don't like burn out. I'm, I'm curious. So when I was reading the book, the question that came to my mind was what are some things that I probably should have been doing the compound effect on that I haven't, or that I started, but I really let slip. For me, so I'm a software engineer, and it's important to know how to code. And I work in a new operating system for me. I'm not used to this one that I'm in. It's Linux. And I didn't learn that in school. But something I started doing last year for like a week was look up Linux tutorials after work at home for like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes in an evening. And it worked great for a week. And then I gave up on it. That one week, of tutorials I have literally used in my knowledge base the entire year just what I learned that week. And I can't believe I gave up on it. That what if I were to keep doing that for the rest of the year? Fifteen or twenty minutes. Like Wow. What you, what can you, so you learn well, there's that, no excuse for not doing that, you, you know? Learn, I've done that too where I just where I do something consistently for a little while and then I and it's working, but then I'm then I give up. I'm like, ah, it's not worth it. And then later I look back and think, wow. I was like really doing something good yeah. there. I wish I would have stuck with it. Yeah, I mean, Warren, crazy. for you, is there anything that, that you gave up on too early, do you think? Oh, yeah. I actually had a bunch of notes um, that, I, that I was going through earlier today from when I read the book the first time. And one of them that he suggested in there was like keeping a food um, daily like blog. Like a diary? Yeah, like a diary of your food. Or and a I, scorecard. And I, yeah, and I did that for like two weeks. I wrote down every single thing that I ate. You and did you did that thing. So like every handful of nuts every, or every everything you know, I drank drink or everything water. that went in my mouth went oh my. on on my app. And wow. I, since that day, every time I'm very conscious of what I eat. And I did only did that for two weeks, like you said. And but it's affected me. But I often wonder too, what if I would have took that to a month or if I would have done it for two months? Four weeks, yeah, or, exactly. Right. Hmm. Uh, one thing I remember from the book, um, there was a guy that went and got Starbucks every day. Every morning he'd go get Starbucks and it cost him $4 a day. What's $4 nowadays anyways, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did this yeah. over and over and over and over 20 years, it added up to over $50,000. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Just because it is Starbucks. And the thing is he could have bought a brand new car or a brand new pickup after 20 years by working his same job, having all his other habits, just that one <laughs> habit, he would have changed it. Um, and I was, when I started my business four years ago, I was very, very tight and we had to be, you know, and we created a lot of, of habits um, that were very frugal. Like for one, we, we don't have TV and we watch all our shows. Yeah, online. that saves a ton. And we save about $60 a month. Well, what's 60 bucks a month? That's $2 a day. That's nothing, right? <laughs> well, no. What if we took 10 things and we saved $2 a day? That's 20 bucks a day. And that adds up so fast right. amazing um and there's just little subconscious things things we usually think mm -hmm. are so tiny um and then they add up so it, it may be easy to say hey just do a little bit every day the everyday part is the hard part it's not the little bit and it, and what the compound effect does marvelously is it lowers the amount of you know change required to get to your goal 
but you just put that over time by making it a habit and you get to the same place and it's harder to stick to it is the downside of that. So I don't know, is it ever worth it to be dramatic in your move and make this huge change or is it better to spread it out? Um, let's just take this to the business side of things. Um, sure. Let's say you, you wanted to grow really fast in your business. Like let's say, okay, I have a mm-hmm. commercial roofing business or I have a, um, roof consultation business and I grow really fast cause I want to be instant. And so I do whatever it takes uh-huh. to borrow money and I grow super, super fast. Well, what happens is, um, we lose customer service and the people around us are affected because of our change was so fast. Um, hmm. too oh, fast yeah. of growth and too fast of change is actually very hard and it's very stressful on our body and on our mind. Um, so I think, that everyone should consider growing slowly because what happens is it changes your lifestyle and it changes your habits. Ah. Um, however, I think if a guy is young and full of energy and he's maybe single, like he's not married, he doesn't have responsibilities with children. Um, it's okay for him to run wild and free and grow really fast. But at the same time, he still needs to be consistent in his huge growth. So he needs to grow. Right. Money. Right. But, right it's consistency. Like you said, Spencer, it's not, it's not, you, you, it's not hard to do some, like to do it once or like it's the consistency. That's the hard problem doing it every day. And what, what's interesting that you brought up Warren about the business side is that if you do it long term, like I, I would imagine you get more time for it to be a proof of concept that really plays out because people see it, they get more aware of it. It's a whole lot better to refine yourself as you go, which is what a routine lets you do because it's a little bit every day. It's not so high risk to change it. And like, what if you guys would interview somebody about a book every single day for two weeks or a month? <laughs> True. We'd get burnt out. You'd, like you'd get burnt really out, fast. but you'd make the same mistakes over and over and over because you wouldn't realize uh-huh. the mistakes you're making. You couldn't perfect the process. Um, and now if you just did it to mm. once a week or once a month or whatever you guys do, you can watch the video and say, Hey, next time we're going to change it up uh, next time. You know, we're right. and so I've learned that a lot in business is, Sometimes it's best just to, when it's slow, just sit back and look at everything you just went through. And then, oh, that's so good. Again. So, when you go slower, there is a next time. Oh, yeah. When you do it all at once, there, there may not be. Hey, Amen. Right, right on. Right on. Huh. Right. Huh. So, it's crazy. So, yeah, that's, that's sometimes the problem is people do try to grow too fast and then they can't learn. And you can't learn as you go if you grow too fast. You can't, you're not aware enough, or it's like, you might try something new, like okay, we're gonna do this thing, but what if it's what if it's not the right thing to do? But you'll, you'll never know until you crash and burn. <laughs> but if you do it slowly, you, you'll kind of like figure it out as you go. So you said this book also helped you has helped you in your personal life and like your marriage. You mentioned mm-hmm. has what what's one thing that you've kind of changed or done because of this book in mm-hmm. your personal life? So I don't know if he mentioned it in the book. I think he did, but I might have read it somewhere else too. But when we first got married, you know, I, I was really, really busy, but then I would take a week or an evening or something and we'd you know, have a special night out or um, we'd go on vacation somewhere and splurge. Um, and it was great. Sure. Um, but when I realized that there was the small things that matter, um, I realized how important it was to bring coffee to bed uh, in the mornings or help with the dishes or cook once uh-huh. a week. Um, and my wife, obviously, she noticed right away. And I just started trying to do the tiny, small things, like the really, really small things, like pick up behind myself and, and organize. That don't seem like that much. Right. And before I was so worried about the big things. Okay, I'm going to buy her flowers. I'm going to buy her chocolates. I'm going to do all these. <laughs> but that was once a month. And when I started, you know, just thanking her for one thing every day or noticing something about her every day, it, huh. it changed dramatically. And I think same with our spiritual life. You know, people love to go to these conferences and these, they have this huge revelation this one week. And then you see them two weeks later and they're right back where they were. Yep. But then we have our other friends who are very consistent and seem to grow every year a little bit. Um, They're very consistent in their walk, um, but they never go to these events. They, yeah, they just, (laughs) yeah, they just live a very uh, good life. And every day they try to improve a little bit. And they compare themselves to, to God and then to themselves a year ago instead of to all these other people and to try to get to the top right. really quickly. Huh. Right. I love what you said about comparing yourself a year to who you are a year ago instead of 
who, yeah, all these other people at these big events. And I've gone to business events, and in some ways, you shouldn't go to a business meeting just to get excited, and because it's most likely, it's it never lasts. If you look at the people who are ex- excited, just like you were saying, Warren, especially like network marketing and stuff, they get so excited in the beginning, they're calling all their friends, and like they're really starting a business, but then they, it, two weeks later or, or two months later, they all quit, <laughs> and it's the ones you never because expect they that are successful. It was it was just an right. emotional hype, and I attend a lot of conferences, business and and spiritual conferences, and I always just try to to take at least one thing home that I can really work on. Like instead of uh-huh. getting all hyped up about a hundred new things, is try to take one thing home that I know I have to change and I know I have to work on. Ah, wow. and, you, and that's manageable. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so I think, I think live events are very important, but I think like you're saying, if a person is um, brand new to, let's say a business and they go in there and they see somebody that's at the top or they hear somebody say, okay, you can make this much money. They want to get that instantly. They don't, they don't understand. They didn't see the behind the stories, the previous chapter in that person's cha- in that person's mm-hmm. book. They just flipped to mm-hmm. the back of the book and said, this guy did it. I want to do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> never put the work in. Right. And that's why, like you said, they get all hyped up. Interesting. So yeah, you've had experience. You you have like, was it 30 contractors that are under you in the in the Conklin company that you've kind of helped train and, um, and help grow their businesses. So you kind of see the trend of which types of people will be successful or the ones that, that have the long-term mindset. Yeah. So I'm interested. Yeah. So what, what are some things that you see in the people you've worked with that make them successful? Hmm. Um, Like we actually talked about at the beginning a little bit, like they jump in too quick. Um, And I have a great group of guys. I can't complain at all um, Mm -hmm. that I get to work with. I don't, I don't like to say they're under me because I feel like some of them are way above me. Right. (laughs) And I get the pleasure of working with them. But the ones that everything good that you say just immediately, you know, goes straight to their head and they like, this is the best thing ever. Like, this is amazing. This is great. Sign me up now. How much can I pay you? You know, the mindset, <laughs> those are usually the people that like, they don't ask any questions. They just jump all over it. And those are usually the people that uh-huh. later are on to the next thing. Whereas the guy that was really hard to convince um, to join mm. or to let me work with him, he was actually the guy that, once he got it, once he seen the value in what I was, you know, offering and what the company was offering, those are the people that go long term um, because they ask all the right questions and then they follow what you, you know, they take it way more personally and they actually listen when you give them instructions. Whereas the guy that jumps in yeah. has all his own ideas, um, he's going to blaze the new trail. And then when it doesn't work, He's out. <laughs> so the people that act too fast, it's almost like they make the huge jump and they go in circles because they find the next huge jump in a different direction. And then, but versus like, so the risk when you do the, you know, the compound effect way is you pick one thing and you go really far out on that tangent and then you just keep going, keep going. And you wonder if that's the right tangent to be on. But I guess you can do a hybrid where you're like finding some new things and you're going out at the same time. Yeah. So he talks about the book a little bit about a jet that left from, I think, Los Angeles and was headed to New York. Um, And with that jet turns even one degree off at the start, (laughs) he's way off of his destination. Yeah. And so like Mm. you're saying, I think it is, it is important to maybe check out on some new things, but at the same time, you're always going to check them with your core values and your, okay, jet has that final destination of New York city. Like, so you're always going to compare your new adventures to, does it, does it line up with my journey to New York city or is it um, out in Dallas and I might take a big detour. I might get way off. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So you should always make small corrections along the way. Like you might find a slightly different direction to go, but it has to still line up with your main goal. So I think, I think the field of the problem with a lot of people is that, well, they don't have a, a big goal to start with. You know, they don't, they don't have a goal. Right and then they end up switching jobs all the time. They'll work for one job a year. Oh, I'll try a new job here, which in, it's good to experiment. But like, you're never going to build momentum if you switch jobs all the, your whole life. You know, if you just because you haven't built anything for yourself, or you're not, you don't, you go from one skill to a completely different skill. I heard it at one of the trainings too. Like, you got to make sure to always utilize your main skill. So if if you're good at writing code, Spencer, 
and I tell you that I can help you make good money doing roofing, you're like, well, forget <laughs> that. I'm just going to go do roofing. Um, there's no way you can use your current skill set to do roofing. Yeah. Maybe in marketing or somehow you could, but you could no way make that switch and still use your, so you, you poured your whole life and all your years of study into to what your yeah. existing job yeah. is. Um, so what he's saying is if you were to just throw that aside, well, uh, yeah, I would like to say, you know, make sure you can, your number one skill set, make sure you're really good at that and make that the main thing. And then new adventures can come, like you said, make a small adjustment to make the mm-hmm. new adventure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's little play to the sides, but not like a complete 180 and be like, okay, I'm going to jump full into this thing without any idea where it's going. Like yeah. if it does, like it, maybe you do need to change directions, but you have to have well, a really good reason. To yeah. Do like Dry was saying, if you don't have a main goal, if you don't have an end goal, if you have no, yeah. if you have no why, if you have no purpose, you have no destination, get in the next, just <laughs> then, back the other direction. Yeah. As long as you think there might be a goal there. You know, if you're working for minimum wage at a job that you hate and you, sh- you don't see yourself there next month, you hope you're somewhere else, but you have no idea where you're going. Well then shoot. Yeah. Take some risks, jump onto the next thing yeah. and look yeah. into it. It's something that gives you a little bit of hope, you know, some kind of purpose to live for. Well, this has been a fun discussion on the compound effect and I really enjoyed this book and it was fun to talk with you, Warren, about, you know, applying it in life and business. Pretty cool to hear how you're already doing that, even having just read it a year ago, which goes to speak, you've been doing the compound effect. Pretty cool. You didn't just give up a week after reading it. Yeah, it was good to have you, Warren. Where can people um, find you on like social media or um, or your website or something? So... I have a I have a Facebook page or my profile on there. You can look me up. I have a business page. It's just Warren Yutzy Y U T Z Y, um, and then I also have a website called The Roofer Help. Um, right. And if anybody's in construction or um, would want help with the business startup, you know that's what we're planning to do with that. That business or that website is currently under construction, but it should be done here in the next week or two. Um, and so that'd be something you cool. want to check out. But the compound effect, yeah. I just want to say. Our business grew by over 100% this last year. And we didn't no. do any, and at four years old, you know, that's a lot of growth. Um, we didn't do any major changes. We did not do any major huh. changes to our business. But when I look back at it, it was all the small things that added up. We were doing some things that we were being very sloppy with, um, some things that just, we, we just had to tweak them a little bit to where they were more organized or there was a system in place. And it completely, or not completely, but it really changed our course over a year's time. And we didn't even know it was happening until it happened. Wow. So for anyone that feels like, you know, they're just maybe flatlining and they're just a little bit stuck, um, this book is going to take you to that next level big time because it's going to expose the small things. And that's some advice. I Yeah. Maybe you have the big things in life figured out. Okay. But if the small, we all can work on those small day-to-day choices. And that's all this book is about is that the tiny things. Right. That's cool. And one of the tiny things you can do to help us as a listener is clicking subscribe <laughs> because you can not miss any action. If you're here every week, you will get a new episode with a book like this that takes 20 minutes of your day just to have a quick listen and you know see what you can apply because we're trying to apply it just like you and uh, find the key principles from the book. Yeah, we're trying to do the compound effect just by doing a podcast every week, even though it gets sometimes it's not that easy. But we do it every week consistently, and um, it's been growing slowly. So you can also be on the show just like Warren was today if you uh, fill out our survey on motivationminute.com. Yeah. Thank you, and we will see you next week. <laughs>